I'm Madison Stevenson. And I'm Mary Dunshamont. Welcome back to M&M's MVPs, where we're going to break down week four of college football. Today, we're going to break down the Clemson win over Wake Forest 51-45 in double overtime. As I said last week, I thought we were going to have a lot to talk about, and we definitely do. So, Mayor, let's just jump into it. I mean, I definitely think that critics from the beginning have been saying, DJ doesn't play any real teams. He's not playing any competition. And this week proved that DJ can play competition, and he's going to show up and come out with the win. Even in situations where it's double overtime, there's pressure. And he still finds tight end Davis Allen for a 22-yard touchdown to win the game. That's I mean, essential. That For sure. That's an, definitely an MVP of the week. And my MVP stat of the week is mm -hmm. DJ went 221 yards just on third down. That was essential for their win. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I really feel like he needed to be able to make those big plays. And we're seeing a lot of growth in him. And as you said, the critics are like, where's DJ? Where's the DJ that we want for mm -hmm. Clemson? He showed up and he's showing up this season in every single game. He's proving something mm -hmm. to those critics. And I think that's really admirable to see. He hasn't let the criticism get to him. He's like kept focused, kept training, mm -hmm. and he's he's seeing being the player that he's meant to be right now. And I really feel like that's admirable. And his leadership is shining throughout the offense. Yeah, even in the post game when DJ was asked, he said the defense had the heart, the offense had the heart, and we're just playing good football. And I think part of DJ's confidence stems from the fact that Coach Dabo Sweeney always believed in the players. Even last season, when everyone was saying, take him out, we need a new quarterback, Dabo stuck true to his beliefs and said, no, this is DJ, he is our quarterback, and he's going to win. And that's what we're yes. seeing. I think for sure another my MVP is also involving DJ, and that's when DJ did the two-point conversion to Bo Collins. As we talked mm -hmm. about last week, Bo, DJ, they've been having this good chemistry yeah. going. You know, they got that from high school, and they're keeping it rolling. But what was so impressive about DJ in that play is he's got defenders on his leg. He's literally on one leg, but he's still on the film looking downfield to look mm -hmm. to make that pass. He's looking to make points. And he's so confident that he mm. will take that extra second to step back and like look at his progressions and make mm. the right pass. And I think that is really important mm. in the quarterback to lead a team is to make these really big plays at important moments, especially when you're facing pressure on the defense like Clemson was. Yeah. They had to come out with those plays on mm. offense to be able to be in the game. And I think that was a big contributor in the win on Saturday. Yeah. And in this game, every single point counted. And I think we have a little special shout out that you mentioned to me earlier. Something with BT Potter and a yes, field goal. Yes. What was that? My second MVP definitely has to be BT Potter's field goal. 52 yards ties his career best. When asked and pressed today, though, he says it feels routine. He didn't mm -hmm. even know that it was 52 yards when he went out there. He just ran out there and went to go kick the ball, which is probably a good mindset because there was only four minutes left in the game. So good thing he wasn't too yeah. nervous. But I really feel like it really shows how much Dabo, like mm -hmm. most head coaches, might be a little hesitant mm -hmm. putting their kicker out for 52 yards with four minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. And then this field goal, though, tied the game. And it really mm -hmm. shows how much of a pillar BT Potter is for the Clemson offense. You know, he didn't have to return for this year, but it really shows the culture mm -hmm. that Dabo created and how much they all trust in this team and how much they want this team to succeed. So I really felt like that was an MVP mm -hmm. of the week because sometimes, you know, field goals, kicking, like it's mm -hmm. not the most flashy play, mm -hmm. but it's the play that keeps that caught, kept Clemson in the game and honestly got them to overtime. So that's yeah. why that's definitely one of my MVPs. I mean, field goals can make or break a game. Yes. Take the LSU-FSU game. Yes. The LSU O-line sells, and the kick gets blocked. But lucky for us, we're not LSU, and our kicker is 7-for-7 seven seven on field goals this year. That's a 100% yes. percentage. We couldn't, we couldn't ask for anything better. All I can say is, just like we said last week about Will Shipley, which Will Shipley is still in beast mode, so mm -hmm. we're not saying that. But BT Potter definitely came out clutch in this game. Yeah. He definitely came out clutch. And I know we mentioned this in the past weeks, but the defense of Clemson is struggling. We had three pass interference flags, which related directly to three Wake Forest touchdowns, and that's unacceptable in ACC play. That's not something that can happen, but this is the MVP, so we're going to find a silver lining. Of course. And my defensive MVP is going to go to Tyler Davis. Yes. That sack was essential to the game. 58 seconds left on the clock, and this is Davis's first game back since an injury, and he showed up. I think what we've seen in Tyler Davis is not only a step up in maturity, but you can see he's really a leader on mm -hmm. that D-line. 
and he also plays with so much passion. Do you see it in the sack? He's really going after. It's an effortful play. He's going after mm -hmm. the quarterback. And I think that's why it's definitely an MVP of the week because even though there's a lot you could say about Clemson's secondary and how much they need to improve and the corners and stuff, you need to focus on the positive. And one of the positive things was Tyler Davis's performance in that game, especially as you yeah. said, coming off injury. That's quite impressive. And one other defensive shout out that I did want to mention was Nate Wiggins had a tough game. He really did. But him breaking up that fourth down pass, it's not how you begin, it's how you finish. And Nate Wiggins finished that game. Yes. Because if that pass had been caught, who knows what we'd be talking about right now. I know. It totally turned the tide of the game. It actually changed the outcome of the game. And I think that really proves what we hear Coach Dabo Sweeney say all the time. Every play matters. Yeah. Every minute of the game. 60 minutes more overtime, it matters. And mm -hmm. honestly, it came down to the final play. And I think that's why it's definitely an MVP for sure. Yeah. And lucky for us, this isn't the only battle of the Carolinas we get. We got to do this all again next Saturday when NC State travels to Death Valley. But I heard there's something special about this game. Okay, I'll share the great news. We are excited to say that ESPN's College Game Day is coming to Clemson next weekend for NC State versus Clemson here in Clemson at Memorial Stadium. And this is super exciting. A top 10 matchup, a big game. College Game Day comes back to Clemson for the first time since 2020. And when they came in 2020, it was only like it was COVID. So they were only on the Memorial Stadium field. So now it's all the fans, all the yeah. students. It's going to be a really exciting atmosphere. And I'm sure we're going to have a ton to talk about next week. Yes. I think this win was essential for the Tigers, considering that they needed confidence going yeah. into this game. They lost to NC State last year. Yeah. So they have a chip on their shoulder where they're going in and they need to prove to everyone, NC State last year was a fluke. We weren't in the right headspace. A few things weren't going our way, but we are the Tigers. This is our house and you will not beat us in Death Valley. I think for sure. I think what we're gonna be looking forward to this week is seeing how the offense keeps up. Does mm -hmm. DJ keep progressing? Also to see how the defense makes some adjustments. We're seeing another veteran quarterback in NC State and a lot of really good talent running backs. So our defense is gonna have to step up to be able to compete mm -hmm. in this game. And I think they're gonna come out though with that spark with college game day coming, 7.30 game under the lights of Memorial yeah. Stadium. I mean, what more mm -hmm. could anyone ask for? It's even early to say, but I think that this game could be the indicator for who's the ACC champion. I definitely think this game could be a big pivotal point. I think against Wake Forest, that was the first test for the Clemson like team as a whole. But this game, this could be the tipping point for them. So this is either going to spark or we'll see how it goes. But I think with the energy of college game day being there under the lights of Memorial Stadium at 730, who could ask for anything better? And we'll be so excited to be here next week to break down all about Clemson versus NC State. As always, follow along on social media, especially this week, because we will be at ESPN College Game Day sharing the behind the scenes. So follow all things The Clemson Insider. Follow them on social media. Bye, Bye. guys.
excited to be here next week to break down all about Clemson versus NC State. As always, follow along on social media, especially this week because we will be at ESPN College Game Day sharing the behind the scenes. So follow all things the Clemson Insider, follow them on social media. Bye, Bye. guys!